Okay, we're rolling. Hi, family. So, uh, the video you're about to see is actually three days of interviewing Dad on June 27th, 28th, and 29th of the year 2007. Uh, Dad and Mary Lou were out visiting uh, Sue and myself out here in Everett. Um, so, uh, a couple of things that will become painfully obvious uh, right <clears throat> from the start. One is that Dad is a pretty cool guy, and number two, I'm a horrible vi videographer. Um, the lighting, for example, in, in some of the interviews is, is really bad, and um, uh, the sound quality is, is, is pretty good, but uh, obviously uh, I've never done this before, and if I had it to do over again, there are a lot of changes I'd make, but so again, apologies. Um, no one has seen this uh, uh, video, uh, per my agreement with Dad. Uh, we agreed that he'd do the interview, but uh, that no one would see it until after he died. Um, interestingly enough, I was—I uh, hadn't even looked at the video since the day we had shot it uh, until last Sunday morning, uh, August 5th. I was editing it when I heard that from Beth that Dad had died. Um, one other uh, note is that um, uh, chapter two may at first seem like it's redundant. It's a repeat of day one. We thought I, I thought I had lost the, or or deleted the footage from day one. As it turns out that's not true. Uh, we were able to capture all of it. And then lastly, um, hopefully you'll find the video uh, good enough, impressive enough, uh, interesting enough that you might one day think of videoing uh, your life with your kids. Thanks. Global warming. The storm started when Seattle... $9 and charged a roughly $5 monthly Testing, fee. testing. For more testing. now, we turn Hello. to Michael Barbaro of the New York Times. Testing. And Michael, welcome. Thanks for having home me, Depot. Let's they start out something. with who this is Their, uh, uh, Walmart supply thing. Huh? Good memory. That's right. Uh, was it? Who, how yeah. big a customer so base is there up? and who are they? Uh, okay, we're going. All right. So, uh, oh, you're going to do this. Oh, you're not standing behind the camera. Okay. No. Okay, we're having a conversation. Oh, said, we're just talking. Just sit on the bed. We're just talking. So fast. Oh, so she borrowed it and then I got support because of that. We're just talking. If that's okay. I mean, if we're not interrupting you. Okay. Please I'm going to open this because I'm a little warm. I'm yeah, you look a little flushed. Tell David Frosting. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we're talking about, uh, let's go way back. Um, so do you remember your grandparents? I remember my grandfather. And your, his name? My father's father is Cornelius. Cornelius. He was the fire captain. So you, you remember your father's father, right? My remember? father's father. Right. And he was uh, captain of the Brooklyn Fire Department? Captain in the fire department. And what was he like? Uh, he was an authoritative, uh, sort of an authority figure. Uh, we didn't wrestle with him or anything like that. He was not that kind of a guy. Got it. Yeah. Uh, he loved to take us to the firehouse, let us slide down the poles. Really? Oh I yes. Mean, I never heard that. Yeah. And then he, and uh, and we'd fool around with the typewriter, and uh, and occasionally. He had a he had a Model A or a, not a Model A but a black Ford Air Ford yeah. four door sedan Ford, and he took myself and my brother Tom, and I think our cousins Tommy Miles and maybe one other cousin to the fire to big fires in downtown yeah. Brooklyn, yeah. and he'd show the badge, and they let us through the fire line. No kidding. And we'd go in and see the see the fire. Well, you know, it's funny that you're talking about that because I remember in Long Island, we'd be, we'd be somewhere and there'd be a, a fire engine that would go by and you'd start chasing it. I uh, know. Yes, really? you would. I mean, and now I don't mean all the time, but there were a number of times where you said, let's go see where they're going. Yeah. You did. Well, we were, you were young, you and Rick were young. 
we'd take you down to the firehouse and let you sit on the fire engine. Yeah, that I remember. And you got a yeah. kick out of that. But you don't, you don't remember chasing any uh, fires? I, I don't really remember. I may have. Not literally chasing, but we might go follow them. But yeah. He was a great guy. We used to, we had a four room, four apartment house in Brooklyn where I grew up. And he and my aunt, his daughter, who my, my father's sister, who to house kept for him. And we'd go in there at night occasionally. He'd be sitting in a big chair with a cigar, and we'd, we'd light the cigar for him. He'd let us strike the matches on that. And that was the extent of my contact with him. Really? And then maybe I was seven or eight years old, and he got sick, and they carried him down the stairs in an ambulance to the hospital. And he died, and they had a fireman's funeral, a fire captain's funeral. With yeah. Everything else, but were you living in the same house? We were living in the same building. Same, same building. building. Is that the same building that Grams was in when we would go pick up Grams in Brooklyn when we were kids? Yes. We, we, same building. No. 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 Okay. No. She uh, uh, after my father died in 1947, I guess. Uh, I was still in the army, and. Uh, Tom was at Holy Cross. We, uh, when I came back and got out, <clears throat> we spent the summer in Long Beach, and we came back. And then I started going back to college because I had finished a year uh, before I went in the army, and I finished the last three years <clears throat> at Fordham. And I commuted uh, by subway because I didn't want to leave my mother alone. She was by herself with uh, with. Uh, my daughter, my sister, Jean, sister Jean, Virginia, Virginia, uh, and uh, she finally got. It was a. It, we owned the house. We had three tenants at that point in time, and there was too much work involved. We yeah. putting out the trash and the garbage and putting up storm windows, and uh, so she finally decided to sell it, <clears throat> and then she moved to another apartment, she and my, my, uh, my, my uh, father's sister, Molly, Aunt Molly, and her husband, Uncle Miley, who was the former jockey, they bought a two-family two house up in the 70s in Brooklyn. And my mother lived on the ground floor with my sister, Virginia and Barbara, and the Mileys lived on the second floor, and I commuted there to, most of the time, to Fordham, and, uh, and then later on, she, uh, I think, Aunt Molly wanted to move to Long Island to be with her daughter, who was married and had children, and my mother moved to another apartment uh, on Fifth Avenue, Fourth Avenue in Brooklyn. And she lived there for a number of years. And uh, in the meantime, I had left Fordham and after a short job at an advertising agency. You worked for an ad agency? For a short period, about a year. Uh, did you want to be in? in, in, in uh, I did. I had, you did? Well, you never told me. I had an interest in advertising. I They had the... The Advertising Association of America, four A's they called it. Whoops. Yeah. Uh, and they passed, they had aptitude tests that they used to offer, and I took some of those when I was in college, and I ended up with a high score. And I thought, well, it's a very creative business. Yeah. I kind of thought, it, thought I was creative, and I thought I was verbal enough. And that would be interesting. I never thought of you as yeah. creative. Uh, I always thought I was, and not as creative as you, from what you've shown me lately. Uh, but I was in this job. There's a beginning job, and I was at that point engaged to your mother, and uh, who I might met down in Long Beach and Atlantic Beach, and. Uh, so I was eager to get a, a more remuneration and a little more 
specific career yeah. rather than rather than work your way up. And, yeah. But it, uh, that's interesting. Let, but look, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Yes. Right? All we're talking about tonight is your childhood. My childhood. And, okay. Uh, so, uh, how about your grandma on your father's side? Never met. Never, never met. Her, met her. Never she, met. Her. She, had she been dead for? I don't know how long. And what was her name? Do you remember? Don't remember that either. Do you remember her maiden name? Uh, Flanagan. My mother's maiden name is Flanagan. Flanagan. Right. But I don't know what my grandmother's maiden name. The one who would know is Jean, who did the, uh, right, right, our right. daughter, our, your sister Jean, who did the, <clears throat> the study. Right, the, the genealogy. Genealogy oh, study. Right. Yeah. So, um, uh, and I, from what I remember hearing is that the, uh, being a captain in the Brooklyn Fire Department at that time was a pretty big deal. I mean, that was, that, I mean, for an Irish guy, that was, you didn't, that was about as high as you could expect to rise. Right? Is that fair to say? I don't know if that's true. Uh, and that's and we're talking about so we're talking about their mid late twenties, uh, early thirties. Uh, well, I was born in twenty seven, so this must have been in the early thirties. Yeah. Uh, you know, we you knew that we lived in Washington D.C. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I was I went to kindergarten. And started first grade down there. Right. And where in where in DC did you? Live? It was it was we lived in two different houses. We rented. Uh, it was Chevy near Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase. Chevy right. Chase. Right. Blessed Sacrament was the right. as I recall that was the name of the parish right. and the school. Well, you remember in the so Chevy Chase is actually Maryland, right? And so you were near the border between near DC. the border of Maryland. Yes. Okay. Right. All right. Right. And um, you remember the street or? I don't. No. I don't. And uh, how much time did, were you down there? Do you remember how many years or when did you, when, how old were you when you left? Well, after um, Hoover left? We left probably at 32 when Roosevelt got elected. Right. Because he promptly fired my father and replaced him with a better organized, better related Democrat. Sure, sure. And we moved back to New York. Uh, but was your was your I'm sorry to interrupt, but was your was your dad a Democrat? Yes, not I think he was a Democrat. Yeah. But as far as I know, he was never active in Right. He wasn't well, well connected. No. He had a he had he was an attorney and he had background in the Admiralty Law. Admiralty. <laughs> Admiralty Law. So why do I get this about insurance business? So he insurance business, Admiralty Law and, and an attorney, all three? I mean, yes, well, they, they're connected. You're an attorney and then you get into specialties, right. and he got into the admiralty side of the house. And then where did the insurance thing come? Uh, I don't know, well. No. Uh, he, he didn't have an insurance business? Well, yet? yes, he was, he was. I mean, I remember, uh, you remember going up to Navisink and you telling us about how he was called Mr. Sunshine by his, right. by his employees right. and he had an insurance business. He, he was president. Of the uh, Admiralty, Admiralty, Admiralty Insurance Company. It was a division of the Fire Insurance Company of Philadelphia. He was headquartered in New York City, and that was again his Admiralty background again. <clears throat> he was active during World War World War II, uh, insuring boats, and you know I can remember him getting. Presents from clients, ties, and bottle of French champagne once, and really? I don't know why they, I don't know the circumstances over what he was insuring, whether it was cargo or the ship itself. But during World War II, obviously, they must have lost a lot of ships, and I don't know. Sure, did they ever come home? Kick, yeah, kicking the dog because the ship went down. There? I no, he never did. Yeah. No, he never did. He was and he great disposition, huh? Happy. Very, very easy going. Yeah. Very easy going. calm, easy going. Yes. Sort of like a Billy type or, you know, or Terrence or... Yeah, I'd yeah. say so. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, I have two questions. I want to hear about the Depression. And, I mean, so you went through the Depression firsthand, right? I mean, things really didn't start getting better until 38, 39, 40, right? 
Yes. They didn't get, just because Hoover, uh, Roosevelt got elected in 32, things didn't get better overnight. They certainly didn't. So, uh, how did, how did you, what, any personal recollections of, of, uh, of the Depression? I mean, remember bread lines or, or, your, or, or Graham's telling you to eat everything on your plate or anything like that? Not, not many. We were sheltered and I was oblivious. Uh, I remember uh, at our grammar school, St. Patrick's in Brooklyn, that uh, you'd come down the stairs to go home for lunch. We'd, we'd be about two or three blocks from, from home. And they'd be cooking in the basement. And uh, they, they would usually cook, sound like they're cooking hamburgers. They used to smell so good. I was wishing that I could be eating a hamburger there <laughs> instead of going home. And I used to go home for lunch, and my mother would have once in a while a lamb chop, baked potato, and things like that. And and I, it, it didn't really strike me that this yeah. was sort of a charity uh, supplement. Yeah. We had, and then I used to have, come back from lunch. And the nuns would occasionally, they would show they have a, a piece of bread with strawberry jam, and they would choose lots to who gets the strawberry jam and the bread. And I, and I never got it. I could never understand. Uh, what they were giving it to the poor kids. They were giving it to the poor kids. Yeah. And we had one poor boy in our ha house in our class. And, he always looked so dirty, his hair was so wild. Every so often, they'd take him out, and the nuns would, and wash his hair. And yeah. That's the only thing I remember. And really? So, now we were very much sheltered, because my father had a pretty good job. And, uh, we lived in a, not a, you know, good middle-class neighborhood in Brooklyn. Yeah. And he was always working. He was never. And he was always working. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's talk about pets. Let's. let's pets. Talk, that was a little depressing. Let's talk about pets. E ever have any? Never. When you were a kid. Well, well, I shouldn't say that. Probably weren't many pets around because people were eating them. Back. We had one in Washington. We got some friends across the street. Puppy had dog had puppies, and we prevailed upon my parents to let us adopt it. My father was kind of a stiff neck about something, and I don't think he was too crazy about getting a dog and having to feed it and take care of it, because obviously <coughs> Tom may not have been seven or eight years old, yeah. so no one was going to do it, any work but my father and my mother. But we got this puppy, and uh, I don't remember too much about it, but... I can remember one day we were in the outside the house, and there's a car coming down this little oh, hill, no. and the car had wobbly wheels. I can no. remember that to this day. And we, we, the kids were on both sides of the street, and we were calling this puppy, and the puppy got hit by the car. And you watched it. And we watched it. Do you remember the puppy's name? No, I don't. I don't. Did we took it into the house. And uh, my father, as I recall, didn't want to take it to the vet yeah. because of the expense involved with the puppy. But we finally prevailed upon him, and my mother did. And he came home from the vet maybe a couple of days later. <clears throat> we put him in the basement and went down the next morning, and he was dead. And I can remember, I can remember accusing my father <laughs> of having killed the puppy, one way or the other. Yeah. And of course, my father didn't pay any attention to that. No. That's that's our only experience no. with pets. Jeez. <laughs> sorry you why. asked. I, <laughs> I can understand why that was your only experience with pets. That um, was my only experience. Okay. Now. Uh, um, uh, and we've got to talk about, um, well, okay, so let's talk about your, um, uh, your brothers and sisters. Let's talk about 
Tom and Ginny. Uh, and later Barbara. And Barbara, right. Barbara. So, three yes. kids. Yes. Three kids. And uh, who, who kicked, Tom was the oldest? Yes. Then you? Yes. Then Ginny and then Barbara. Yes. And you and Tom always seem to have been pretty close, right? No? Not, not really. You're number two. Yeah, I'm like, You're like two. me, you're number two. Yeah. Uh, he was uh, always, as the oldest might be, more responsible. Yeah. Uh, good student. Uh, kind of nerdy like Ricky. Uh, <laughs> you gotta delete, delete that one. <laughs> A little bit like, a little nerdy, I guess. I don't know. Uh, very serious. He used to work in a candy store to help out. And he, I don't know how much money he made. It wasn't much, but he might have been in high school but this time. Maybe by then, I don't know. I can't see him sticking any candy in his pocket. Or... No, he, oh no. But he was able to buy a box of O. Henry's, probably for a dollar, you know. At those times, he'd take it home. He never seemed to give any away. And then he, and then he bought the Hardy Boys series. The whole series. You remember? Well, one at a time. Oh, right. And I think he let me read them after he was finished. Uh, but we weren't we weren't that close. Uh, but we went every summer. We went down to Long Beach. We had a bungalow down there. Yeah. And uh, we were probably closer there. We played ball together with friends, yeah. to the beach together with my mother and sister. And, uh, and you know, went from there. And then, because Barbara, Ginny was uh, the younger of the three of us, first three. Uh, and she was uh, a little heavy. Yeah. And, uh, is Jenny's gone now? She still no, she's still alive. Yeah. Oh yes. And uh, my mother, I know, I can remember her mother taking her to the doctor to get to get a diet. Yeah. And uh, and they didn't seem to get along that well, maybe because sure. And, Both but she was fairly close to my father, yeah. and she and I got along okay. We'd we'd squabble once in a while, but. We weren't close, yeah. and she was a good enough student. Uh, I think she did okay in school, uh, but we weren't all that close. Yeah. Who married George? Who married George? Barbara, the is telephone my, guy. He's my fourth, fourth child in the family. Right. Or, and I guess he was sort of a one of the what do you call them? Uh, a mistake. Uh, he must have been. She must have been. She must have been at least eight years younger than me. Yeah. Uh, maybe as much as ten, I'm not sure. And uh, she uh, was much more lively, cute, blonde, not fat. Uh, had a lot more fun. Blonde? I always think She's of blonde. it. Was Ginny had the red hair. Ginny had red hair. Yeah, right. Yes. Okay. Because yes. I remember that. I remember her. I remember it being at Graham's. In Brooklyn, at her townhouse, not not at not at the shore. Yeah. And uh, she played. She played rough. I mean, she was rough with us. She was she. Yeah. She. I mean, she she liked. I don't know. She she was playing with us, but I just remember she was hard. I mean, she just seemed to <laughs> smack us around a little bit. Is that right? Yeah. But so so that's Ginny. Yes. But Barbara, I don't have any sense for what no. Barbara looked like or. What, I mean, uh, so let's just say Barbara in her 20s, did, who, what actress, any actress, that, did, did, who would she look like? I mean, she looked like, uh, and same with Jenny, what did they, who did they look like? Anyone, any actress alive today? No, I, I, I don't, no. can't think of that. They, uh, Jenny would, uh, Jenny had nice hair, and, uh, pretty face, just, just, always just too heavy. Yeah. And it had a tremendous effect on her personality, sure. I think. Sure. Barbara, on the other hand, was much more outgoing, uh, lively, uh, 
not much of a student, went to a parochial high school, took a commercial course, uh, and because you know I'm in the in the army during some of this time, I'm yeah. in college, college. Yeah. Uh, so I wasn't. You weren't around. I wasn't around that much. Tom and I were both not around that much. Right. More in the uh, in the summer, in the beach would be down. Uh, so tell us, uh, how about a story? When you were kids, when you were just kids, before you went off to college, I mean, besides the puppy story, there's got to be, uh, you know, some story where you guys, uh, as a as a family, your parents, your, you know, some fun thing happened. Any good stories that you can think of? You know, you know, Uncle Tom came home with a cut lip, or I don't know. Any, any, maybe you had a. You know, someone chasing, I don't know. Oh, we, you know, there were a lot of everyday things in life. You know, we used to have Sunday afternoon after church. We'd have a, as was our habit, most Sunday afternoon, we'd have a full-fledged dinner. We'd yeah. have, we'd either, we'd either go drive out in my father's car in, the, in Brooklyn. Yeah, we're rolling. Okay. So, uh... Let's start again. Okay. And uh, um, so I thought we today we'd cover uh, up until oh I don't know up until uh, college. Fine. Okay. So we'll start with um, let's start with your grandparents again. And you you remember your dad your grandfather but not your grandmother right? Right. My, my grandfather was. A, a captain, fire captain in uh, Brooklyn, right. head Brooklyn of the fire department. Right. Head of New York, New York fire department. He was captain of the firehouse, and he'd lead the sh lead the show when there was a fire in the neighborhood. Right. Uh, he was, was he well known? Was he famous, or was he legendary? Or? Well, he was. He, he had a reputation. I think he he in fact, Gene uh, do, did some work on him yeah. and uh, found out that he got into a fight once or yeah. twice. And, yeah. And uh, been reprimanded maybe for drinking. Uh, found out that he used to be a trolley car conductor, and and met the woman of his dreams at running a coffee shop at the end of the the, the, sh the trolley car run. No kidding. And they he got, ran a coffee shop. You no, know, his, oh, his she ran. His a coffee shop. his wife, I see. my grandmother. Right. And uh, and what got, was her name? I don't know. Don't I don't remember. Okay. Uh, they got married and. Uh, they got married, and uh, the oldest child, oldest one, the father, I guess, uh, I guess he was the oldest child, was born six months after they got married. So, <laughs> I can do that math. So uh, <laughs> figure that out. And it was Cornelius, right? Cornelius. And it, so his and oh, that's right. And your your dad's name was Tom. Thomas Cornelius. Right, Thomas. Yes. Was he known as Tom or Thomas? Your dad. Uh, Tom, I think. Tom? Yeah. My yeah. my my grandfather was known as. Corny or Khan, I think. Really. And uh, he was a very outgoing guy. I think I told you he, he used to take my brother and I and some of our cousins to to fires, show his badge and let us go in and see you know, get close, you know. And he was he was a very thoughtful that way. But he was not we're not close, you know. Right. It's not a, not a kind of wrestle in the in the room with the kids, you know, right, right. like they do nowadays. But he was a nice guy. Got sick. I don't know whether his liver trouble or what, but. He went to the hospital and never came back and right. had a big funeral with all the fire trucks and things like that. Yeah, you said you remember them carrying him down the stairs. I remember him carrying him down the stairs in the right. house, yes. Um, was he a big man? Yes. For some reason I'm thinking he was big. I don't know He why. was big. I don't think he was very tall, yeah. but he had a big chest, big yeah. corporation, you know, kind of kind of heavy, uh, but, uh, and bald, yeah. you know, bald. And uh, and no one ever talking about Ireland, right? No one. Ever I don't remember anybody talking about Ireland. The old sod. Uh, uh, never. None of no. that old Irish stuff. Nothing about St. Patrick's Day or any right. of that. Did and they, they didn't hang out with people from Ireland or help uh, help people from? They weren't connected with Tammany not, Hall. And, not not yeah. that I know. Not no. that I know. My father, my grandfather, was born in Ireland. Oh, he, I I didn't know that. Oh yeah, he was born in Ireland. Came over. 
when he was 16, apparently, so there must have been 1860, 1870, something like yeah. that. Uh, and, and I don't know the dates of when he got married. Uh, and later on, as he did, and he was the first one over from his family, he brought over his parents and some of his brothers and sisters. Yeah, really? And they all settled in Brooklyn. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and Jean, in doing her research on the genetic, on the genealogy, uh, the genealogy found that, that she checked death certificates and found out many of them died in the 50s and they tended to die of consumption, which I yeah. guess is really TB. Which is a problem they hadn't solved in those days. Right. Uh, but that was the extent of my recollection. Mm. My, my f didn't fight in the Civil War. No, no, I don't no. think he was here until after the Civil, after the Civil War. War. Yeah. My father, on the other hand, was in the Navy during World War One, but I got, he never said much about it. I got the impression he just got in just about at the end the time the war was yeah. over. You know, yeah. 1918. And your dad, so your and your dad was called. Uh, they called him the gals in the office called him Mr. Sunshine. Right? Yes, yes. And a very outgoing yes, type of guy. Yes. Was your dad the the kind of person who would wrestle with you on the on the? No, on he the, was he was not. Uh, kind of, no, he was a little more formal. Uh, yeah. We we would horse around a little, but we had a, we had sort of a formal relationship. Both yeah. Tom and I. Yeah. Respectful and uh, we used to help him around the house. We had a. This four four family house in Brooklyn, and he'd put up storm windows in the fall and take them down in the spring, and you know, and uh, he had to pull them up and down with a rope from the ground. And I'd help him sometimes. Tom would help him. And uh, we originally had a stove, a uh, coal stove, coal yeah. furnace, yeah. and we used to take the ashes out, things like that. And then we convert it to oil and change things a lot. Mm -hmm. And, but yeah, we were in that house for a long time. Uh, I remember probably when we came back from Washington, D.C., and I guess I didn't cover that yet, but uh, maybe five years old, uh, we lived in that house until uh, I went in the Army and uh, my, my, after my father died. Is that right? Yeah. So, so really, it went up until the time college or the Army, you were only lived two different places, and that was uh, Washington, Washington D.C. And, and, and Brooklyn. And the summer house oh, in, the in Long Beach. And did, did you always have the summer house? Yeah, I, I, I don't remember exactly when, but it was, uh, uh, I think it was probably pretty much from back from, I was born in 27, so it was probably back around that time. Yeah. We came back from Washington probably in 32 or 33. I would guess we had it pretty soon thereafter. Mm -hmm. Just a wooden bungalow and a yeah. whole street full of them, and no, the, the street wasn't even paved. You know, yeah. you had, they had a garage at the corner. You could park your car in the garage. Mm -hmm. My father had a, huh. I think I told you, he had, had a Studebaker. Yeah. We'd drive down from Brooklyn in the spring, and uh, late spring, after school was over, my mother would load the place up with sheets and things, and the, we had four kids in the car and the two adults and drive have to drive. We didn't have any parkways those days. You yeah. drove through Brooklyn sure. and out and all the way around through Rockville Center. And uh, we'd come back in the spring and in the fall. Yeah. And uh, we'd spend the whole summer there. Yeah. Did and you love it? Down, down well, the yes, we loved it. I really yeah. did. Uh, we would we played ball, went down the beach, uh, you know, probably twice a day, learned to swim down there. There was the the bay and the ocean. You could swim in either one. Yeah. The water was clean. Uh, became a lifeguard uh, when I was probably 16 in high school because it was during the World War II and a lot of the older guys were in the Army so they oh, had I trouble see. finding people. Oh, so uh. so uh, and I was a lifeguard for five different summers then. Yeah. So. Um, so back when you were a kid, anything in particular you'd like to do? I mean, did you have like a best friend that you hung around with or did you love playing ball, or did you just hang out in your room and read books? And oh no, we had. Uh, did you did you lay by the fire with a piece of charred uh, twig and <laughs> and draw and do some sketching? <laughs> no, no. Split rails. I'd come home from school, uh, and uh, as soon as I came home, changed clothes, went out in the street. Yeah. And uh, we'd play uh, street ho hockey. Street or? hockey. Yeah. Uh, touch football, 
Uh, we have a big lot down the corner. We play baseball. Yeah. Uh, entertain that way. All sorts of games with kids. Right. All the, a lot of a lot of young boys on the on the block. Right. And guys no best friend. No no one no, guy. No no not particularly. No yeah. uh, guys I went to school with. Uh, you know I. Uh, I, li I stayed with them. They, some of them were down in Long Beach too, and yeah. we've stayed in touch with them for years. We even right. recently called one of them. Oh, no, okay. sure. Yeah. Um, uh, what was your grammar school? What's the name of your grammar school? St. Patrick's. St. Patrick's. In and in, in what in St. Patrick's Parish was there? A, what was the name? Parish. Of Parish. Yep. And what and what area of Brooklyn is this? Flatbush. No, no. no this is this is. Uh, Fort Hamilton, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. It was part of Bay Ridge. Yeah. It it's uh, the the entrance entrance road to the Verrazano Bridge, which is there now, was just behind the just behind maybe a couple of hundred yards away from St. Patrick's Church. We were quite a, quite a, quite a ways further away from that, but uh, it was uh, it bordered almost on Fort Hamilton, which was. Used to be, they had some guns that protected the harbor yeah. uh, against invasion from World War One and the Civil War too. Yeah. You know? And uh, but it was a, it was a nice neighborhood, middle class, a lot of apartment houses. We had a private house. Most of our block was all private homes. Yeah. Uh, but you know, two blocks away, you'd find four and six-story apartments. Elevators, you know, yeah. kind, of, kind of comfortable. Anyone in your family uh, sick as a, as kids? I mean, did anyone, uh, any of the kids, get TB or were no. seriously injured no. or hurt or no? No, we were blood, we were lucky. And and it seemed like you were pretty much unscathed by the depression. I mean, you don't really no. remember bread lines or anything like that. As I told you the other day, uh, I don't remember bread lines and was un totally unaware that there was a depression going on. Right. You know. Right. Except my mother had mentioned once in a while, eat your food. Right. The people in China, the little boys starving. in China, you know. I remember she used to talk about the starving Armenians. She might, was that right? Yeah, yeah she might yeah. have. Yeah. Good so, time. Okay. And, um, uh, thank you, my dear. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and you were down in, in D.C., in Washington. Um, your, so your dad was down for one or two administrations uh, of the Hoover administration. Do you know? He, I think he was. I don't remember, remember for sure, but I suspect he was hired. Maybe for the last, maybe the last four to six years of the Hoover administration. Yeah. I, well, Hoover was two, was two terms. I'm not even sure, sure. of that. Yeah. I think he was. Yeah. I'm not even sure because he took, he took a lot of the blame for the depression. Sure. Sure. You know. And that was 29, yep. and he got 32, Out, he got ousted right. by Roosevelt. And my father, as I said, he, he got fired from another, for a, from a more uh, typical Democrat, right. I guess, more right. supportive Democrat. And uh, you mentioned that uh, you, Gr Grams had told you that they had gone to the White House on a few occasions for some dinners. Uh, dinners, yeah, yeah, yes, and kept the, had the, Place cards and things she kept, sure. yeah, showed sure. them to us. Yeah. Uh -huh. And do you remember any anything about DC at the time? Or now you lived right near Chevy Chase in Chevy Chase. Or Chevy, Chevy? In Chevy Chase, yeah. uh, I'm sure it was within the confines of DC, right? But bordered on Maryland. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I can visualize, and I've been back since, like my brother Tom has. Oh, you have? Yeah, yeah. And, and and try and found the church. Yeah. Uh, what was the, do you remember the parish or the name of the I church? think it was Blessed Sacrament. Yeah. yeah. It was grammar school. I started kindergarten and first grade there. Yeah. And, uh, and do you remember any of your teacher's names? Back no, in grammar school? No, 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 no. They were all nuns. No, they were primarily nuns, I right. think, then. And you, you said uh, that you, I mean, um, that you were, you had, uh, you were excellent in academics in grammar school? You were... Yes. You were a, you know, top, yes. top in your class? Yes. Yeah? Uh, yes. And uh, uh, won a scholarship to Regis. Regis as a result. Uh, yeah. One other fellow in my class won it also. Yeah. He never, st never, never stuck it out for whatever reason. 
Did well, you study? I was the first one. I was the first one in four years in that in that school to yeah. have won the scholarship to Regis. Yeah. He also had a scholarship to, to the local diocesan school, St. Michael's, where a number of my friends went. Yeah. And uh, I would have preferred to go, but, he's, but my the reputation of Regis was such that there was never a question. According to my father and mother, I had to go. Sure. So I had to take the subway. Uh, I took the subway into Midtown Manhattan. Yeah. It was probably 45 minutes. Changed trains at 14th Street to take the the uh, IRT uh, up to 84th Street. And walked over to Regis. Yeah. Did that for four years. Mm -hmm. And uh, met you know developed some very good friendships at, at, at Regis. Regis and graduated. Uh, I was not. I was not. We had not top of my class, but, uh, you know, I, I, I don't pride myself on how hard I worked. I, it came, would you say it came easy to you? I, I think it, you could, yes, I thought it was easy to stay with the flow and do about a B plus or A minus grade, yeah. to be very honest. I think I was didn't work as hard as I could have. Yeah. Uh, but you get a little tired of the commute, you know. Sure. Uh, that's one of the negatives to, the, to that. But you know, I think it's worked out for me. It made it easier, I think, to get into school later on at colleges if 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 you wanted to. But yeah. my, my father didn't want me to go anywhere else. You got really good at that commute. That commute. I sure did. Um, and we talked about uh, pets the other day, and uh, one dog, right? One pup. Yeah, a puppy. Yeah. In D.C. And what? Not a purebred, probably. No, I think I don't remember, but I think it was just a mutt. Some neighbors. Had some puppies and they gave us one. And, yeah, uh, we got to tell the story. He got uh, wobbles. He, yeah. Wobbles the dog. <laughs> Unlucky. He was. It was. We were standing there, a bunch of kids, Tom and I, and and I don't know who else, neighbor children, and the, down the street comes this car. I remember the wheels were wobbling. I remember that to this day, and the kids were calling the dog back and forth, and he. They, he came across at the wrong time, and he was hit. And we brought him in the house, and my father wasn't particularly keen on spending the money for a vet from a, a pup we found in the streets, sure. basically. Sure. But he did, and uh, came home a few days later, and we, he stepped up and kept him in the basement. And we went down that morning, and he was dead. And I remember getting very, very annoyed at my father. And, Claim that he killed him. I don't know why. You know, six or seven years old, didn't know any better. Yeah. But uh, he never held it against me as far as I know. But that was the last of the pets. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so that. Uh, anything? Let's see. Anything else about uh, about uh, grammar school? Um, were you particularly good in math or or English or? Well, they had this. They had this. Uh, System, you had to pass regents that were state exams. Yeah. They still don't they have that? Is it a regent? Know, I don't yeah. know whether they have that yeah. now. And I remember in the eighth grade, I got a hundred in a in a uh, history or history or geography regents and ninety eight in a spelling regents. You know, when I graduated, they announced this: your grades and your clubs, your, your class standing, and the fact that you had a scholarship to regents and the and the and the hundreds, you know, the yeah. exams you had, the, yeah. and uh, I, yeah, I was a I was a good student. I can remember that when I was a, when I was young. I can remember in the second grade. I think I had got twenty six in arithmetic, twenty six in arithmetic. Wow! And it was funny. I used to pal around with a couple of kids that were probably kind of poor, tough, tough little guys. Yeah, you know, what eight years old? Yeah. maybe, you know. And I don't know what happened. Finally, I got a got into the, the second B, 2B, with it, and I started to come around, and from then on I had it. I didn't have any trouble with school. Yeah. How about, did you have a particularly good memory? Have you always had a, you seem to have a, a pretty... Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. Uh, Would you, anyone ever say you had a photographic? No, memory? I don't think, I don't no. think, I, I okay. don't think I did have a photographic memory. Okay. Many. Um, okay, so, uh, and then, uh, then your uh, oh, we got to talk about your brothers and sisters. So you weren't 
that I mean, you know, you, you didn't really pal around with Tom, but he was. You, you, I didn't know that you were the second oldest. So yes. Tom was Tom was the oldest, then yes. you, then Ginny, Virginia, yes. Virgin, and then Barbara. Yes, right, right. And uh, you all kind of got along, but you know, you weren't b best friends. And, and, no, uh, right. And uh, and Tom, pretty uh, pretty straight. I got the impression that. He was always a pretty serious guy, and I mean, he almost went into the seminary, right? When he left grammar school, he and three or four other guys went to uh, uh, high school. It was called a uh, seminary, I guess, pre-seminary yeah. Yeah. high school. I forget the exact name of it. And uh, he went there, tending to go in the priesthood. And by the time he graduated from high school, uh, his Desire had changed, or he yeah. looked at it differently. Right. And then he went on to, from there to Holy Cross. Mm -hmm. uh, Did he was he in World War Two? Was he what in World War Two? He yeah he my father convinced him to become to join the Merchant Marine. Oh really? To avoid, frankly, getting drafted in the Army or the Navy, and he went to radio school. And he was a radio operator on, on merchant vessels. Oh, I didn't know. During most of the World War II. Huh. Got paid very well and saved money. Got no veterans benefits. Uh, so when he came back from when the war was over, went back up to Holy Cross uh, about the time uh, and was in, in the Holy Cross. And my father died in 47, I guess that was. Yeah. And how old were you when your dad died? I was 18. I was in, I'd been in the drafted in the army. In I'm just trying to remember. I think it was. Weren't you seven? I think you said you were in the shower. You were 17, and you were in the shower when your dad came in and told you about Pearl Harbor. Uh, I was. I was. It was 41. So I was in. In. Uh, uh, that's when the. That, I was just graduating from grammar school in 41. Oh, really? And it was Tom. No, I was taking a bath for some reason. Oh. And he knocked on the door and said, they bombed Pearl Harbor. And Jeez. I didn't know where Pearl Harbor was. No one did. And I don't think he did. Yeah. And uh, and then the, we were in the war. And then, yeah. then of course... So you had, you had just graduated from grammar school? Yes. Oh, I didn't, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So you were, of course you weren't eligible for World War II. No, I wasn't. No, no. I just made it... I was 17 when I graduated from high school, my father, I wanted to enlist, some of my friends didn't enlist in the Navy, and uh, he, he didn't want me to, so he, he wanted me, want, want me up, want me, sent me up to Ford and then suggested I go to Ford, and, you know, I, because they had a trimester system, so you go right from high school into college, and I got a year of college, and three trimesters, and in April of 46, I got drafted. The draft was still on. Yeah, but the war was over. The war was over. Yeah. Uh, August, I think August of '45, the Japanese surrendered, and uh, I went in the army and uh, spent about a year, year and a half. Right. Um, and so back to your dad dying. You were 17 or 18. I was 18. I was in the army just after I. Yeah. Six months or so after I got drafted, I was actually in California. Uh, I'd been shipped out to California. I don't know why, because I didn't have much time left. And, but uh, I was in Hamilton Field in San Francisco. and uh, uh, Got a call or a telegram? I got a yeah, Red Cross, and they got me on a, a ride on a, you know, an Air Force plane yeah. back to Washington. I took the train up and went home for the funeral. You know. Had he been sick? Didn't he? Yes. He had, a, he he had, had a brain tumor? He had a brain tumor, and I was home maybe on leave before I went to California. He had a brain tumor, and when it was over, my mother knew it was malignant and didn't tell him, but I knew and Tom knew, and uh, it was going to grow back, and it did, and so it must have been four, six months later, I'm out in the West Coast, and I got the call, and he died. Mm. And uh, I, I saw him. Well, I saw him for a couple of days before he died. But he he was 
he was pretty much out of it, but yeah. very depressed. Really? Yeah. Well, he was a young man. He was 48 years old. Oh, I didn't know and, that. Uh, I didn't know that. And he, had, he had had plans, and yeah, oh, he was very young. And, uh, you know, comparatively, I didn't realize how young that was. Sure, yeah. Uh, and uh, so, we, you know, we had no, no tearful goodbyes or any of that, so it yeah. just, it just faded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Had the priest in, and uh, yeah. And uh, any other memories of him? Uh, I mean, yeah, they're all all favorable, very responsible, responsible, reliable. You yeah. know, always there. Right. He and my mother would would uh, read at night, uh, watch, the, listen to the radio. We didn't have TV in those right. days. In the summertime, uh, he'd be he'd be on the porch down in Ballon Beach having a. Tom Collins once in a while. Yeah. He didn't drink for they neither one of them drank very much, and uh, he'd come home from he'd commute from the city and take the bus and come down. He usually go for a swim. He'd, he'd go down with his bathrobe on, and, and we'd usually get down with him and watch yeah. him and keep yeah. him company. Yeah, and uh, so it was a very uh, pleasant, healthy, happy, normal life. Oh yeah, yeah. I'd say very happy life. Yes, yes. yes. Well, I look my childhood is very happy. Um, and uh, did you ever get in trouble? <laughs> did you ever get in any trouble? Uh, I certainly never heard you talk about being in trouble. I, I can't remember getting in anything serious. No. Uh, no. No, I, I really can't remember. I think about right. it, but I can't remember. Right. And uh, started, when did you start dating any, any, Anyone before mom that you were kind of serious about? I remember that uh, Kathleen's uh, mom, Simonson, Simonson? Uh, oh, yes. That, you right. know, you yeah. dated her a little bit? No, no, no. I didn't date her. She, he, uh, but you remember her? You remember? Uh, Pat Simonson. You remember the the grandfather with the handlebar mustache or something? Right, it was her father. Yeah, her father. Yeah. But you didn't, you never dated her? No, no. Yeah. She was a very pretty little blonde girl, and, yeah. but she was... She dated a friend of mine, a fellow lifeguard, who was a year or two younger than me, so, and she was younger than him. So she was a little young for me, but he was d dating her. I guess if he hadn't been, I might have, but, but bef yeah, I bet there were a lot of girls down the beach, and, uh, and yeah, they, they were like your lifeguard, so they'd always come up, and, right. uh, and I went out with quite a few of them over the five summers I was down there. Yeah. And, uh, and you smoked then, everybody smoked. I, I started, Tom did, my, his friends, I was a sophomore, and you were allowed, we had a smoking room in Regis and for seniors, yeah. you know, and I can remember smoking uh, as a junior, I know. And you smoked, I remember you used to smoke Kent's. I don't remember. I think you I don't remember? I re well, I don't know what you smoked yeah. in Regis, but I know what you, you smoked. Before you stopped, you were smoking Cats, Cats. that could have been. And I remember seeing some ad where they they were trying to market, uh, I saw some old ad where they were trying to market Kent as like the thinking man's cigarette or something. Does that <laughs> no, make any sense? That doesn't no. strike a bell at all. Yeah. And I kept smoking for years, of course. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, okay, uh, lifeguard and then uh, the FBI, right? Uh, well, after college. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, let's. Yeah, let's. Hit well, I, I. Anything happened in Fordham? Well, like first Fordham. place on the on the baseball team. Right? Yeah, but, but that was in freshman year, and uh, when I was before, then I went in the army. When I came back, I was commuting from Brooklyn every day for yeah. three years, and uh, and that was a hell of a commute. That was up at Fordham to the Bronx. That was worse than Regis, but my mother was alone. Well, not alone, but Tom was in school and. and may have been married during part of the time, and it was just Ginny and Barbara home, so, and I didn't know what the finances were, so I didn't want to, I had, I had the veterans benefits, so it did, the tuition was paid for, but board and room wouldn't be, so I think I got $75 a month from the Army. Yeah. Uh, so I stayed home and uh, finished college, so college was not, the last three years were not a very great, uh, tremendous Satisfying experience. It was not college like you had it. Right. You know, where yeah. the kids did. Yeah. Uh, but that's the way it was. You know. And I graduated and didn't know what I wanted to do. And I finally uh, 
got this job with I like the I like the idea of advertising as I t told you yeah. earlier I took the the advertising association test and did pretty well uh, in creativity and uh, got a job as a trainee basically and I guess I was 20 23 years old then and, mm. and uh, but by that time I I had been going with your mother for about a year, I guess, maybe even longer, and, uh, and we were engaged. So, you know, I, I wasn't making a hell of a lot of money, $50 a week, probably. Sure. So then the, I heard from some friends about the openings for the FBI. They were holding tests. And uh, so I went down and uh, took the test, and I guess I did pretty well, and I said, well, you know, the, the minimum age is 25. Uh, would you be interested in another job in Washington other than special agent? And I said, no, I, I have a job, and, I, and I'm not looking for a job. So apparently they needed people then. They were, it was the atomic energy. It was the Cold War. Right. And uh, so they were, they were waiving some of their strict requirements. Right. So they waived it, the age for me, and I went down to Washington and... Uh, in Washington and Quantico, Virginia, and uh, for, I don't know, 16, 18 weeks, and yeah. trained, and uh, all of the legal stuff, and the, the uh, firearms, and the def defensive tactics, and things yeah. like that. Did you like it? Did you like the FBI? I did, very what, much. What What did you like about it? I mean, just the, the, the reputation, you were all well thought of, I mean, it was the status, sort of elite, yeah. The status, it was, it was, it was, the money was good because I think I got paid $6,500 a year, including half a day on Saturdays. I really? Guess. And my brother had graduated and went to work for IBM the first year or so. I don't think he was making, I don't think he was making $5,000. Yeah, okay. So the government tended to pay, in the early stages, tended to pay pretty well. Yeah. So that part, but this more importantly, was the, was the status, you sure. know reputation, doing something important, yeah. not a desk job, right. sitting in an office, sure. commuting, walk, you know, walking to work or something like that. And the Cold War, I mean, it was, and, it was serious. And the Cold War made it extremely serious. Yeah. And I went out to, my first office was Kansas City, and you always go to, the first office was a training office, and you stayed there for about a year maybe, and then they shifted you to someplace else. And uh, I, I, uh, Spent uh, most of the time in Kansas City, but I spent a lot of time in Springfield, Missouri, Missouri, as they pronounce it, which is in the southwestern portion of the state. And there I worked with an older senior agent who used to be in the Missouri Highway Patrol, and uh, uh, they, they called him Dime Ass. <laughs> he, he, he Dime was such, Ass? Such a skinny guy oh. when he rode a motorcycle for the for the highway patrol, yeah. I guess he looked like he could hardly fit in the seat. <laughs> He's a pretty good guy, tough guy, you learn some good things from him. Yeah. And down there, we did a lot of uh, draft dodges, uh, stolen cars, oh, bank yeah. robberies. Yeah. Uh, Brinks, were you on the Brinks case then? Or well, what? I covered leads on the Brinks yeah. case. Yeah. But those, those days, those leads were all over the place. Sure. There, anybody that was in Boston, during that period of time, uh, for I don't know how they must must have li lived in a hotel up there. They got the names and numbers, and they'd send out leads, and, and I'd, some of the ones you'd cover, you know. Yeah. And uh, I thought we had a bank robbery when we were down there. There was a bank robbery when I was in uh -huh. Kansas City, and the senior agents would do most of the work, but you'd be covering little leads, watching this road, checking the airports, that sort of stuff. Yeah. And that was exciting. That was yeah. fun. And, uh, did you ever catch any bad guys? Yeah, we did. We had mostly mostly the uh, the draft dodges, the, the, the stolen cars, uh, things like that. You get leads, and usually you have another agent with you if you had any time. You know, Does the name like, Cabbage Head Thompson ring a bell? Cabbage Head Thompson. That was in, that was in Cleveland. Oh, it was. That, that was, was Cleveland. Cleveland. Okay. Yeah, well, we're Cleveland. kind of getting ahead of ourselves because we haven't talked about mom. So maybe we should uh, sure. Let's, let's let's flip back to mom. So, do you remember the day you met her? Had you been hearing about her before you met her? No. Uh, uh, 
You, you, did you I, meet her? I knew her si oldest sister. I didn't know her. Dottie? Dottie. She used to, she... You knew Dottie first? Not know her, but right. I... You knew who she was. Well, you know, we had a... Tom worked in a candy store that was owned by a family, a friend of ours, I, who I still talk to. Not that candy store at the end of the, at, you know, on the, the old entrance to East Atlantic Beach. Not, not that. No, 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 no. It was, it was in the middle of Long Beach. Okay. And Tom worked there for a while, and we'd hang out there. And the young guys, they'd walk the beach, walk the beach street. The, that was the main street, street. And she'd walk. I remember her walking with some other girl, and they'd be st strolling up and down. And so I knew who she was. You know. Yeah. Her father Dot was Dottie or Eileen? Dorothy. Yeah. Dottie. Dorothy. And then maybe a year or two later, I don't know, we, we went to a beach party. Yeah. And there your mother was. And yeah. uh, she looked somewhat like her sister, but yeah. she, I, better looking, I thought. Sort of blonde. And uh, so we started going out. And, uh, and I don't know what you Did you go, remember? Do you remember? Did you go up to her? Did she go up to you? Do you just. Uh, did we someone were introduce in, we, you that night? No, well, I, sort of, but we were with a couple of guys, yeah. a couple of girls, maybe a dozen. Yeah. I think it was a beach party. Just, yeah. And uh, got to know her, and I don't remember, we're, you know, blow by blow, but uh, got to know her and was very attracted to her. Uh, got her phone number. and. What would you like about her? She's a pretty girl. Pretty and... Uh, yeah, primarily pretty and uh, and friendly, you know, yeah. good sense of humor, and uh, laughed easily. Yeah, so we went, uh, and then we we I'd see her at a lot of we had a lot of parties, a lot of young kids, yeah. not fu not formal parties, at right, somebody's just, house. Right, right. We'd all be drinking beer. Uh, she was a, probably she was a year or two younger than I was, so she didn't go. Is that all? The mom is only a couple years younger than you. Oh, you know, just a year or two. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, I thought maybe it was two, maybe two. Huh. And and uh, uh, and you met when you were what twenty three and she was twenty one? No, no, it's, you were much earlier, right? I so was, no. She was seventeen and you were nineteen. Or uh, let's see, that was that was I was back from the army, and uh, I was probably in my last year at Fordham, uh, and I got out of Fordham and. Fifty. So. Uh, so. I was uh, twenty-two, twenty-three, and she was probably twenty-one. Maybe she was twenty-one. No, hmm. she wasn't twenty-one. She must have been younger than that. Because she was, she graduated from Saint Agnes. I think she, had, I think she had me when she was twenty-one. Yeah, that may be true. Yeah, in Saint Agnes over in Rockville Center. And uh, she went to uh, Marymount in yeah. New York City. I was 30 when Mom died, and she died when she was 56. Yeah. Right? So yeah. she had me when she was 26, right? Yeah. Well, I got, I got, well, I was 23 when we got married. You were 23? Yeah. And so how long did you, how many years did you date? Probably two years. Two years, okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, and you so you dated for a couple of years and um, you got to know the family. Yes. Yeah. And you did you, uh, you did you like Mama and Papa? Yes. Did they all look good to you? Yes. They liked you. Yes. Yes. We had uh, because during the winter time I'm living in Brooklyn, going to going to Fordham, you know. So I'd come down uh, by train sometimes or something. Usually I'd use the, take the car, my father's Buick. And uh, uh, Tom and I would alternate, take turns, uh, because he was going with his wife to be there during that time. And we date, and I'd, st I'd often stay over at the house. Oh, you would. Yeah, and uh, M Mama would cook, and uh, uh, Papa would go downstairs and smoke a cigar in the, yeah. in the room downstairs. And uh, we'd, we'd sometimes have her... Mama's friend from from New York would come down and stay and we play bridge. Somebody, yeah, yeah. and uh, and we go out. You know, hit the local guys, local people that were there, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, that went on for you know 
A year or two, a uh -huh. couple years. And you, so when you met, you were a lifeguard or you were in the FBI? I was a lifeguard. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and we were engaged before I, before I joined the FBI. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there was, I knew I, I was going, I was in, down in Washington, Quantico for, you know, two or three, four months. And then was signed to Kansas City, so I I didn't see uh, your mother for. Uh, well, we came back after we graduated from from Quantico, finished training, came back for maybe we had a week, and I took the car, I drove out, and then I didn't see her again until. This was April. April of. Fifty-one. I was in the FBI. I joined fifty-one. So this would be April of April or May of fifty-one, and we got married in October. So I didn't yeah. see her for no, eight or nine, eight or nine months. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we wrote regularly, but we we'd call once in a while. But in those days, you know, sure. you, you did. didn't you didn't you use the phone that much, right. you know. Right. And, uh, and I worked out in Kansas City and Springfield. With a bunch of other guys that were new, new first office guys, you know, right. in training, and uh, then we got came back, got married. Uh, uh, the the Card House's parents, Dorothy, had, had a big wedding that they talked about for years, and so Dorothy were, was had already married. Yes, yeah, and uh, they wanted to give her Eileen, uh, you know, an equally Decent wedding, which yeah. they did. It was a beautiful place yeah. up on the North Shore of Long Island. Glenwood Landing, I think, was the name of the town. But I think it really strapped them. I think it was they're having, they were having financial troubles. Oh. Uh, he was in the real estate business, uh, but he was kind of stuck in his stayed and stuck in his ways. And when, uh, her brother Eddie came home from the army, and he'd been over there and, at the Battle of the Bulge. Yeah. And I think he'd been wounded, and. Uh, is that right? He, I think he might have been wounded. Huh. Not seriously, but he, he, you know, he had a tough time. But he wanted to expand the business, and but the, you know, the, the the father wouldn't have anything to do with him, and other people were just cutting, cutting, undercutting him, and he was not doing very well. And they were a little bit, Mama and Papa, as they call them, were a little bitter about it. And I don't. They really got. Got, you know, they, got, they were in trouble and they didn't know how. And there was no way to help them, you know. I didn't know any of this and I, your mother yeah. didn't know any of it, really. Right. She suspected time. some of it, yeah. yeah. So uh, hmm. we got married, went back out to Kansas City for a couple of months and uh, drove all the way out and uh, we, we, got, uh, when we got to, we decided to drive right through after we stopped over in Pennsylvania first night and then we kept going and it's dark and we're going through Kansas so is it Kansas no we weren't it, was, it must have been Nebraska uh, Illinois and Nebraska and there's this all these fields and fields of corn which your, your mother this is April just yeah. so it, uh, was it no it was October yeah so it was you know she was she was a little a little bit upset yeah. crying Got to the. We had I had an apartment arranged. First we're not, apartment. We're not at the beach anymore. No, we weren't at the beach, and she cried a little bit. But then, the next day, she was, it was fine. I went back to work, huh. and uh, she went to went to downtown, and got a job at Higby's department store. I didn't in, know that. In a, in a, in a, she was a model. I never covered that when she. Yeah. She went to school for a couple of years, and then she became a model for this hat company. She and Dorothy worked there too. Oh, Dorothy worked at the Yeah, and they were they were sort of models. Full time they, models for the hat company? For the cat. Well they they try to sell customers. They were coming buyers. I see. And uh, and I don't know whether they had shows or not. And but she she had model photographs. Yeah. She took them and then she she did she did a few modeling assignments besides that. We yeah. had some pictures on. And uh, and then when, but she went out to the stores, they all, 
she was easy. They wanted, they were happy to have her working in the hat department. Yeah. She knew all about it. You know? right. And sure. women wore hats in those days. Right. They don't do that right. much now. I heard that mom uh, was offered the cover of uh, Glamour or Mademoiselle if she would have, but all they wanted to do was get her hair cut in this, in a <laughs> shortcut called the sh a shingle. Uh, does that ring a bell? Yeah, I remember. I remember hearing that she story. She was pretty too. young. I think she yeah. was like sixteen or so. Yeah, I I didn't know her then, yeah. but. Uh, and then uh, Richard Avedon, <laughs> you remember that story about, you know, uh, the, it was the time of the it girls, and if you were the it girl, you know, you you were the top model of yeah. the year or whatever. Uh, Dorothy had, had pushed to kept pushing mom to mom, yeah. and mom yeah. didn't really care that much. No. Mom, and anyway, so she went in to see Richard Avedon one day, excuse me, and uh, Richard Avedon came out from his, you know, his inner office and, you know, there are all these gals there and he picks mom and it's you and had her in there for hours photographing her, and, but nothing ever came of it. No. You, you remember that one? No? I, I don't remember specifically yeah. about Avedon. It was after my time, I right. guess. But I mean, was she, I mean, was she, I mean, was she... I mean, today, you know, the you know models have such status, and yeah. But I mean, she, I mean, was she, was she like drop dead gorgeous? I mean, did was everyone talking about how attractive mom was? Was she, or I mean, was she a, a, another pretty girl on the beach, or was she, uh, you know, was was she known as just a really terrific looking gal? Yeah, she was. Uh, she she was not. You know, she was a small woman, as you know, and then, and was not a model, model, you know, yeah. uh, bathing suit model, but she had a very, uh, very photographic, photograph, photographical, photographic yeah. face. Photogenic? Photogenic is yeah. the word I'm looking for. Photogenic face and the blonde hair, you know. Yeah. The, the was she really, was she all blonde? No. Had she, I mean, no. she had dyed it. But, yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, sure. But, but was it? A lot of it was sunshine, but then yeah. later it was aided. Well, like all the girls. Sure, absolutely. And so, did, and it's a good contrast yeah. with her tan and the yeah. rest of it. And, you know, she was, she was, I'd say she was very cute. Cute. Cute it yeah. would be probably a better word for yeah. it. And uh, so, she and I, but I guess she was not really. Maybe she sensed it was a tough business, and she didn't pursue it too hard. Right. Uh, right. But I don't. You know, that was really a little after my time. Because right. she was when she was younger. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I say let's stop. Good. Is that good? Sure. Yeah. That's fine. Let's, that's, enough. that's enough. That's enough for now. So. Uh, in the winter, in the summer, we'd go to the beach. And after dinner, I'd get on my bike and ride to the local store to buy ice cream. We didn't have a freezer. Right. Right. This is Brooklyn. Flush. Brooklyn. No, this is this is in, down in Long Beach. Okay. Uh, in terms of stories. Right. Uh, uh, I'd have to think. You know. Uh, I, we can come back. Yeah, I'd really have to think about stories. Yeah. What? How about cars? Uh, your dad, so you, you mentioned your granddad's Model T or Model yeah. A. How about your dad's car? Mem any, yeah, any, he, any of the cars stand yes, out? Yes, he had a, I think it was a Studebaker. Yeah. Wooden, uh, kind of wooden wheels, you know, the wooden yeah. spokes. Right. Uh, color? What the color? Black, I think it was black with a, uh, on the floor, full length shift, shift, shift gear. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, to Graham's drive. Uh, she didn't drive. Yes, she did drive. In fact, she drove. Uh, and I don't know what. Maybe it was this car, but she drove when we lived in Washington. And she would drive my father to work at the at the uh, Maritime Building, wherever that was. We'd go through Rock Creek Park. Yeah. I remember going through a Ford. It was a Ford there. And We'd go in that way, and she would drive, and and she'd come home. And later on, we moved back to Brooklyn in 1939, 40. He bought a new Buick, 39, 40 Buick, four door sedan, black. And he was so proud of that car. Really? We had some family lived down the block who 
a couple of big young guys that uh, hadn't gone in the army yet. And he called them and told them, let him take, let him take it around for a ride. He was so happy with it. And so we had that car, and we kept that for years. And that was 39 or 40 Buick. And then he died in, what did I say, 47. So we kept it till. He died in 47. Yeah. yeah. Oh, let's see. I have one more, one more thing for you. Um, did did your dad ever talk about Ireland or uh, the, any of the ancestors coming over? Any? Strangely enough, I've I've talked about this with Mary Lou occasionally. Uh, never mentioned Ireland. Never mentioned anything about, to my knowledge, about the old days. He seemed to, not to seem to be you know, the pr professional yeah. Irishman that waved a, a green flag on St. Patrick's Day. I don't know that he was ashamed of that. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't want to say that. But he, I suspect that back in those days, you know. It wasn't something you were proud of. It was not. It may not have helped you in the business world. I don't know. Irish and blacks need not apply. Or? Yeah, that was way back, but yeah. but in the 30s and so I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure that's the reason. But to answer your question, never you know, never talked about it. And uh, back in D.C., politics. Any? Did he ever come home saying, you know, he met Mr. Hoover today? Or I mean, you probably wouldn't remember that. But no. you ever remember later in life your uh, uh, Graham's talking about? Yes, she did a little bit. She showed us. She had copies of, of uh, invitations to the White House for dinner yeah. or a dance or something yeah. like that. And they had gone. I, and they I, went. Yes. Anyway. And uh, I remember once we drove him over to a golf course. He I don't think he ever played golf, but we had golf clubs, and he and she let him off, and he had plus fours on. I can remember that, but I never remember seeing him ever play golf again. But I guess yeah. he felt it was <clears throat> the thing to do, or it was to be desirable. Yeah. But that's about all. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We couldn't have been there more, much more than <coughs> I wouldn't think much more than four years, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. I think that's uh, well. So that's, that's enough. That's enough for now. And yeah. they, I want to hit school tomorrow. But uh, and then we'll get we'll go uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Is that all right? Fine. Fine. That work for you? Yeah, I had no problem. I'm not sure how interesting it's going to be. But... Well, that's for later generations later in... to decide. I didn't get it cleaned up. Oh, you tell me yes, my Testing, testing, one, two, three, four. Testing, testing, one, two, three, four. Scotty. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three.